Hello and welcome. It's a Sunday recap edition of Always College Football. I'm Greg McElroy here with you from the back hall at ESPN. All the studios are currently being occupied, so figured this would be the best place to do it. Hopefully it'll be relatively quiet and we'll try to go through exactly what went down in the college football world today. Michigan Wolverines are the number one seed. No drama whatsoever. Not at all surprised. Washington's the number two seed. Nothing to really look at there. I thought Texas, and I said it last night on the show, I think that Texas was a lock. It was just a matter of whether or not they were three or four. Just depended on how the committee kind of ultimately saw it all the way through. Number four is where it got chaotic. And I can understand completely where people stand. And I, for those that have listened to the show for a while now, I have been adamant in support of the Florida State Seminoles. Still am. Still support them. Still believe that they, they got dealt a really unfortunate hand with the injury to Jordan Travis. Feel terrible for Mike Norvell and their staff. Feel terrible for Michael Alford, their AD. Feel terrible for every single player on that roster. I do. I think it's absolutely an imperfect process. And the good news is it's all going to change here in, in a year. And could this team have won a national championship without Jordan Travis? I don't know. Uh, I don't think so. If you want my honest opinion, I don't think they could. But should they have been given an opportunity? That was up for the committee to decide. They decided no. And that, I think, is an unprecedented thought. Because if you go year by year from the start of the college football playoff in 2014 all the way to where we're at now, year 10, of the college football playoff committee giving us rankings every single year up until this one, it's been the four most deserving. Now, their bylaws tell us that they need to go off of the four best. That's that's their bylaws. I'll read their mission statement to you. The selection committee's task will be to select the best teams, rank the teams for inclusion in the playoff and select the other bowl games, and then assign the teams to sites. That is their mission, their sole mission statement. We've always said, well, that just feels disingenuous. That doesn't feel right because they've never, ever, not once, have they ever made a controversial decision on Selection Day. The most controversial decisions they've ever made on Selection Day was in 2014 when Ohio State was put in in front of Baylor and TCU who did not play a conference championship game, and Ohio State did, and Ohio State won that game 59-0. That was the most controversial decision moment in the history of the college football playoff committee. The second most controversial was in 2018 when a 12 and one Ohio state team was left out in favor of a 12 and one Oklahoma team that had just avenged their loss to the Texas Longhorns from earlier in the regular season. The reason why it wasn't that controversial at all is because Ohio state that year lost to Purdue by 29 points. It wasn't competitive. So, This is by far the most controversial decision the committee has ever made. And I said last night's show, I've said it for weeks, I'm not the one ranking them. It's never been my rankings. I'm tasked with my job to evaluate what the committee gives us. So I told you, here's how I think it's going to go. I think it's going to be some combination of Michigan, Washington, Texas, and Florida State. I thought that's what they do. Because up until this point, the committee has always gone with the path of least resistance until this year. And then upon looking at kind of some of the principles this morning that the committee is tasked to live with, tasked to live by, conference championships won, non-factor in this particular case because the top five teams all have conference championship banners hung. Strength of schedule, significant factor in this particular case. Bama's strength of schedule was significantly tougher than that of Florida State. Florida State was in the mid-50s. Bama was in the top five. That was a pretty big advantage in favor of Alabama. Head-to-head competition, not applicable between Florida State and Alabama. Competitive, or excuse me, comparative outcomes of common opponents without incenting margin of victory. They do have a a comparative opponent, but you cannot account for margin of victory. These are not my criteria, by the way. These are the college football playoff committee's criteria. I personally think some of the criteria is ludicrous especially this last bullet point within the criteria. And if you don't believe me, go look at collegefootballplayoff.com. They have all their mission, the proposed selection process. They have everything, everything all laid out. It's right there for you. And I'm just pulling it right off their website. Other relevant factors include availability or unavailability of key players and coaches that may 
have affected a team's performance during the season or likely will affect its postseason performance. Now, that is a bullet point that I think as we move forward, we need to do away with. As we move into the 12-team playoff era, we need to get rid of, well, if a key player's hurt, you know, we can't put them in. If the team earned it, they should be in. They should. Regardless of whether or not that one individual that might be very important, if the team earned it, they should be in. That's why today I thought was the most shocking result I've ever gotten from the college football playoff committee. The easy thing to do would have been to put Florida State in. They're undefeated. They won the Power Five conference, the ACC. They beat a Power Five team in their non-conference, a team that's currently ranked in the top 15. That would have been the easy thing to do. Instead, the committee went back to their original mission statement. For the first time in the 10-year history of the committee, they went back to their original mission statement and said they are tasked with selecting the best teams. Now, you tell me, and it, everyone has their own interpretation of what but best means, right? Everyone kind of evaluates that differently. I, I don't know if I'm going to evaluate it the same as you're going to evaluate it. And frankly, within the college football playoff committee meeting room, there are 13 individuals. And every single one of those people in that committee room might interpret the meaning best in a different way. But when I go best, I think, all right, well, who would I choose to, if they were to play in a head to head, who, who would I pick to win? And I, right now I would pick Alabama. I would, I would pick Alabama over Florida state. So I feel awful for Florida state. I do. I feel awful for them. I feel terrible for their fans. I feel awful for their players. They did everything in their power to put themselves in the position to have a chance. I feel awful for Mike Norvell, who I have great respect and admiration for. I think he's one of the best coaches in America. I feel awful for everyone, everyone surrounding the program, from the athletic administration to the trainers, to the cheerleaders, to the band, to everyone that would have had the opportunity to be a part of a playoff environment. I feel terrible for him. But I'm asked the question every day. Did the committee get it right? Now, I've said in the past, it would be a travesty if Florida State got left out. And I still believe it is a travesty. But based on the principles that the committee has to work with, the committee got it right. Now, if you want to take up issues with me, if you want to take up issues with Kirk Herbstreit, if you want to take up issues with Booger McFarland or Joey Galloway or Reese Davis, we, we didn't choose the teams. We're purely there to help analyze why they chose what they chose. If you want to take up issues, it needs to be with the criteria. The criteria is what ultimately led to Bama being selected over Florida State. Now, you can agree with the criteria or you can disagree with the criteria. To be honest with you, I'm 50-50 on it. There's some parts of the criteria I agree with. There's some parts of the criteria I really disagree with. I really value the regular season. I really value the regular season a lot. I have hold the regular season in a highest possible regard. But I didn't write the criteria. I didn't write them at all. And if in the criteria, if in the bylaws of the collaboration is relevant factors such as unavailability of key players, that's part of the decision-making process, it has to be factored in. And I feel terrible for them. And had they gone out last night against Louisville, had they gone out against Florida the way Ohio State did 10 years ago, had they gone out and left no doubt and didn't miss a beat on the offensive side of the football, I don't think we'd be having this conversation. I think they would have put Florida State in. And they would have said, hey, even in spite of the absence of their quarterback, they're still in the college football playoff because they showed us over the last two games that the level of play did not drop off. But unfortunately for Florida State, that level of play did drop off, especially on the offensive side. Defense was phenomenal the last two weeks. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. You could not have asked for a better performance from their defense than you got 
from Florida State against Louisville. Even with their back against the wall, punt gets blocked. Tatum Bethune breaks a pass up that was almost a touchdown. Then he intercepts one, two plays later. You could not have asked for a better performance from the defense. But the offense, without Jordan Travis under center, is not what it was. Even the most diehard Florida State fan will acknowledge that. I feel sick about it. I feel bad for him. I really do. But I do believe, at the end of the day, based on the criteria that the committee has to operate with, they got it right. 